What's up guys? It's Ryantium here and today we are back once again in Stellaris Console Edition with the Lock-In Mechanists. And that's right you guys, and no snap. It's gonna be an awesome freaking day. So guys, welcome back and happy Wednesday. So yes, thank you so much for those of you who stuck with me through the little bit of a break that I took. It was a nice week that I took off and uh, very happy that I was able to take that off. Um, but we're now back in full swing, back with the Lock-In Mechanists and you're probably noticing uh, the date, it's a little different than what ended off the last episode, and that's because um, for about an hour, uh, probably almost like, well, maybe only like 45 minutes, I have been uh, just letting the game run because I did some math and I did, you know, did some searching on, on Google and on YouTube and everything like that. Turns out when the end game years start, which in our case is 2375, every five years after that, or I, sh I should say this, one second. Our end year, our end game start year was 2325. 50 years after that is 2375, which New means every five years after 2375, which means 2380, 2385, etc., etc., is going to increase our chances of getting um, the end game crisis to spawn. So, it wasn't 2350 we were supposed to look for, it was 2375 where uh, the chance to, uh, to spawn the Scourge, the Unbidden, or the Contingency will begin to happen. So, I pretty much am just letting the game run at this point. There's nothing more for me to do except for, you know, let it run. I can't go to war to tributize anybody because it just, it requires me to mop up the rest of these machine uprisings. And as one person told me in the last discovered. comment section of one of the last videos, don't help the people if it's bad robot uprisings. They brought themselves into it, they can get themselves out. And you know what? I like that philosophy. But, a little bit of a breakdown as to what our ships are looking like, uh, or our fleets are looking like. We have over a million fleet power. That's just that's just how it is. <laughs> 1,197,765 fleet power, and uh, we are actually still getting more powerful, if I'm not mistaken. Every single time I research, um, I do that, and I outfit a few more battleships, and those should be uh, coming up, it should be the last few battleships that I've got going. Uh, but yeah, I decided to make just a completely like battleship-only fleet, uh, just to add to the misery that is the frame rate whenever you look at this thing. I mean, it's just a tad bit ridiculous having all of those Corvettes. But you want to know what's funny, I've been playing on PC as well um, in that week that I was off, and I was playing on Stellaris PC, and the Federation fleets, they actually build other ships than Corvettes. <laughs> what do you know? I was the sh I was the most shocked pineapple when uh, I saw a battleship come through and I saw a couple cruisers come in. I was like, okay, this is a Federation fleet. They don't build anything other than Corvettes. What the hell is this garbage? So... This is pretty much what's going to happen. I'm going to sit here with like a bump on a log and uh, wait for the endgame crisis to show up. And if it does, it does. And if not, then I guess we go from there. Uh, can they continue to sort out all my worlds? They're just a bit overcrowded. There's a bunch of open building slots and everything like that. However, something strange happened while I was away, while I was letting the game run. The Bernathi Reconquerors, in this system of a start... These guys right here declared their independence for some strange reason, which is why there's no longer a, like, people on this planet. They became their own empire. <laughs> I have no idea how that New happened. Technology discovered. But I came back and it was like someone went to war. Oh, I wonder who went to war now. Who had a machine uprising? Turns out, it wasn't a machine uprising. It was just the fallen empire breaking off from the fallen empire. And I, it created its own empire. I have no idea what the hell happened. I've never seen that happen. Even on PC, I've never seen that happen. But these ones should be the last ones. Can't afford to reinforce my fleet. What you talking about? Oh, I wonder, am I out of dark matter? That's why it's taking so damn long. I'm out of dark matter. Silly, silly me. Now I should be able to reinforce that entire fleet, New right? technology discovered. Yes, I need three more. Yeah, perfect. Okay, that works. Alright, but yeah, so I'm going to sit here like a bump on a log and let the years roll by, and we'll see if we get the endgame crisis to spawn. Just in case anyone was curious as to what's going on in the galaxy with all of the machine uprisings, uh, I'm just now getting sick and tired of having to be in a war with the machines. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to send the Colossus in and start bathing all of these planets of my ally, because it was their damn fault that they got us into this war, so they don't deserve to have those planets in the first place. But... The other thing that's happening is uh, the Xanir Interstellar Autocracy is now fighting uh, the compilers over here. The, what are they, the Ilbrid, Com Kelbrid compilers. What's going on over here? 
Aha. Uh -huh. uh, but yeah, so they are... They're fighting the Kelbrid Compilers and winning, it would seem. The Kelbrid compil Compilers really only have that one fleet, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Xanir Interstellar Autocracy has quite a few big fleets. So I'm pretty sure that will be the end of them. Although the Babaki League has taken quite a uh, quite a beating, I should say. Uh, but yeah, we're just going through and we're, we're capturing all the planets because I'm, I'm sick and tired of being at war. Uh, and then we're just going to give all of our allies the planets back that we don't really care about. If you guys could move just a tad bit faster, that would be wonderful. You move at the speed of smell. My god. But 2378 and we're still just waiting. The end of the Kelbrid Compilers. Would you look at that? They did get pushed back. Very cool. Okay, well that's one last war that we're in now, thank god. Thank you to the Xander Interstellar Autocracy for saving the Babaki League's sorry ass. And uh, because of that, y'all motherfuckers, let's see, where's the Babaki League? You, you are you. Goodbye. I'm not being in any more of your stupid ass wars, even if you are paying me 25% of your minerals and energy a month. I don't need your money. I need sanity. I'm gonna come and sweep your asses. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. You're gonna die. I'm gonna sweep your capital. Uh, how many planets do you have? Five. Hmm. <laughs> to go to war with them just to kill them? Probably. Oh, wow, they made them the Thrall? Oh, whoa. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. So the Bernathi Reconquerors just made the Babaki League their thrall. So now they're protected by a big Papa uh, Fallen Empire over here. Little do they know, though, um, I'm basically the endgame crisis, if I can say so myself. I have like six times the fleet power of these things over here. Let's see, how, how powerful actually are they? Uh, they're inferior to me, which means I only have superior um, fleet power. But even still, it's kind of funny that they think that they could, they, that they could win. 177, 280, 388, 214, and 290. Yeah, I don't, I don't foresee anybody winning against that right now. Not even the endgame crisis. If it spawns, my god. No, yeah, so uh, just wanted to get them the hell out of there. <clears throat> and eventually... Let's see, who was the state of Hifness? We should probably get them out of there too, honestly. We should just break, break them out of the, uh, the Federation. Kick him out of the Federation. Oh yeah, we can kick him out of the Federation. New technology discovered. Ooh. <laughs> I might be able to kick him out of the Federation. That'd be amazing. Actually, I might not be able to because there's only two of us, isn't there? Can I kick you? Mm, kick from Federation. State of Hypnos votes no. Of course they vote no. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well, <clears throat> they can stay for now, I suppose. And we'll figure out a way to get rid of them. Perhaps the endgame crisis will spawn in their space. But, in about two months' time, it'll be 2380. And that will have been five years from the day... Five years from the 50-year mark. Which means we will have been waiting for the endgame crisis for 60 years. So, <clears throat> I'm hoping that when the clock strikes 2380, we'll be able to fight the endgame crisis. Will that happen? Probably not. But, it's worth a, sh it's worth a shot. Okay, so perfect. I just realized that my microphone was muted that entire time I was talking. That's really great. That's what I love to hear. So, long story short, we no longer are at war. Uh, the State of Fifthness now has their New stuff back. I only sweep like eh, three or four other planets, so you know, it's fine. There's no, no more life on those planets, so that's okay. Uh, we're moving everybody back into position, and the lovely Bernathi Reconquerors decided that uh, the Xander Interstellar Autocracy is a little bit of a nuisance. Oh yeah, by the way, we're building this. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> uh, they were a little bit of a nuisance, so they're going to war with the Xanir Interstellar Autocracy. For what, I don't know, but I imagine it's because they share a border with them, with their thrall. And because they share a border with their thrall, they're probably going to kill these guys too, eventually. The Galactic Chim Empire. Honestly, what I want to see is I want to see the Bernathi Reconquerors take all of this space. That would just be amazing. I mean, they've got the fleet power to do it. Um, although, Xanir, the Xanir Interstellar Autocracy has some pretty powerful ships. They've got some pretty big fleets. What is in there? Is this Sanctuary? No, that's not Sanctuary. I figured that was Sanctuary because of the four things there, but no, I would have seen the ring in there. Uh, I mean, they've got some decent-sized fleets. 45k, they got a 25k, they've got a couple of other ones up here, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I, th I think I've seen them bomb around with at least 100k fleet power. So I don't know exactly if... Um, Goal 2 descends into nuclear war. 
You freaking primitives blowing yourselves up again, you idiots. All right, well, now we no longer have that place, and we can colonize this planet. Thanks for the free world. Appreciate you. There we go. So, yeah. Uh, everyone is just kind of chilling, waiting, uh, watching the frame rate drop to zero <laughs> every time I scrolled across this. But what I'm curious to see is the Bernathi Reconquerors, um, just to see what they do, honestly, and how the hell they're going to get over there, because... There's no open space between them, unless they take a wormhole somewhere. Is there a wormhole that they can go through? Because I'm pretty sure they've got closed borders to everybody else. Yeah, that's what I thought. Everybody else has closed borders. Oh, they were rivaling them. Aha! Uh -huh. That's good to know. That's probably why they went to war with them. Like, bitch, you want to rival me? Ain't no the damn way you're going to rival discovered. me. So yeah, I'm interested to see what happens with them. But, a little bit of in, uh, information about what's going on with our Empire Sprawl and our research. We are above our Empire Sprawl, so our admin cap is good to go. And our research, uh, we're now into the L's. And I'm pretty sure L is 30 in the Roman numerals, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, found them. Uh, what fleet is... Oh my. 224,000 and a 127,000 fleet. <laughs> oh my god, look at the station! It's just a, a molten husk. Oh my god. Alright, where are you guys going? They're going to the Elamir. How did they get over here, exactly? They came through MySpace, didn't they? No. No, they, they did come through MySpace. How the, how the hell did you get over here? Did they come through this black hole? No, they didn't come through the black hole. Did they come through the jump gate that I have? I want... Oh no! They're bringing their freaking. Oh no, where is it? There it is! <laughs> They're bringing their Colossus! The Xanair Interstellar Autocracy is finally gonna get what they. finally gonna get what they deserve. Oh shit, they're just killing. in the Pavana system? There was a. I didn't know that there was a Leviathan out there. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh, they've got a smaller fleet right here. Oh, here's where they can come through. There's a wormhole right there. There must have been another worm. Oh, right there. That's what... No, they didn't come through there. They would have wiped out all of this stuff. Did they come through my space? I think they came through my space. That's the only thing that makes sense right now. They probably popped into this one right here. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going crazy. I don't know. But yeah, the Xander Interstellar Autocracy, they're gone. They're, they're probably going to die pretty damn quickly. Which is going to be quite fun for me to watch as my neighbors just d uh, fade away into oblivion. Uh, once we get a direct border with them... Oh, wait, we already do. Uh-huh. New technology discovered. Uh-huh, okay. We have a direct border with the xenophobic isolationists. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to move you battleships and you over to here. Yeah, you get your butt over there. You also need a leader. Why do you not have a leader? Yeah, so we'll just station those guys at that, um... That little spot right there, just in case they decide to attack me. I have a feeling they're not going to decide to attack me, because they see how much more powerful I am of them. But just in case, we've got 99 destroyers, 2 titans, discovered. and 28 battleships with their names on it. Ugh, they're so beautiful, I love those ships. Oh, in our research, uh, we've met, yeah, X-L-I-I-I, -I -I. yeah, so that's what, 30, 40, 43, something like that? I have no idea, I can't remember all the Roman numerals and stuff. So yeah, we'll just put them there, that'll be fine, they're just wiping them, they are wiping the floor with them. Oh my god! Goodbye, it's about to get a whole lot greener up there. Alright, so if by the year 2385 the endgame crisis does not spawn, I'm gonna call the game there. I know that's kind of disappointing, but I do want to move on to other Let's Plays that we have, that we can do here in, oh good lord, here in um, Stellaris Console New Edition. Technology discovered. So, by the year 2385, if the Endgame Crisis has not spawned, I will end the game there, because let's be honest, we are basically the Endgame Crisis. Yep, that's exactly how they got into my space. That's exactly how they got into the, the Autocracy space. They went through my space. Because apparently, we don't have closed borders to them. How is that possible? How are they even able to go through my space if we have closed borders? I haven't the foggiest idea of how that happened. Yeah, because they are indeed, they have closed borders to us and we have closed borders to them. Pretty sure. I don't know. 
<laughs> I have no idea. Construction online. And so just out of some precaution, it's not really going to do anything, uh, but I do actually have a, uh, a nice little setup here. Uh, I just realized something. Oh no, these are hangar bays. So yeah, I have a couple defense posts, a couple defense stations, 20 to be exact, uh, with our titans and our battleships over here, just in case. A little bit of an update about what's been going on in the galaxy. Uh, the Xanir Interstellar Autocracy is shrinking very quickly. Uh, they tried to take over this space over here. They got these systems over here. Uh, but it looks like now they're taking it back. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they're not in good shape. They're getting squished, if I'm going to be honest. They're getting real squished. It's kind of funny to watch them crumble. Um... But we're ready for them if they decide to come to war with us. I doubt they'll come to war with us. We've not done anything to piss them off. We're not even rivaling them. Um, but we do have a direct border with them. And I think that's probably why they don't like us. Interference policy, artificial beings, xenophobia. Could be why they don't like New us. technology uh, discovered. If they ever demand us to surrender in the two years left before the uh, either the endgame crisis spawns or we end off the game, uh, I doubt we'll do anything with them, honestly. They're, they're not going to do anything to me. They're not that scary. But, just to go ahead and catch you guys up with what's been going on in our economy, obviously our economy is absolutely crazy. We did actually finish our Dyson Sphere, and it's beautiful in all of its glory. I love these things so much. A little bit impractical, because a Dyson Sphere probably would not be a gigantic shell around a sun, more so a, a spinning amount of mirrors, kind of like a Dyson Swarm. But still, really sci-fi, super cool to see. It. Uh, we're now just massively, you know, redoing these uh, repeatable. We're up to 14, uh, 14k research. I have seen much higher research in the year 2383, but at the same time, it's kind of nice to have. Economy overall, we've got a total of 9,494 energy being produced every month with a gain of 2,387. Uh, 2, we're consuming 7,106 energy a month. Pretty good. We're making almost five that are 4,200 minerals a month with a monthly gain of 1,723 minerals by spending 2,476. And that's only on jobs. That's your alloy production and your uh, consumer goods production, everything like that. Then food, we've got, um, we don't even need food, don't even look at it. Um, we're trading 224 consumer goods a month to just like kind of almost break even. It's a little bit crazy. Uh, but you can see that we're making uh, 2,000 a month, but we're only gaining 80 because we're consuming 1,900. Alloys, on the other hand, we're pretty much, we're very close to the amount that we're actually creating. We're producing 1,392 alloys, but we're gaining 1,066 with 320 of that uh, going towards ships and buildings. We're actually making way more than that. It's because our fleet cap is a little bit overboard. We're making lots and lots of our uh, strategic resources, crystals, moats, gases, everything like that. Influence is influence. We're producing 12 a month. Unity, we're producing 2,000 a month. And tech, we've got 14k. Empire Sprawl is looking great. Empire Systems, 50 colonized uh, planets. 2,200 pops. 21 out of 23 bases. And 916 out of 725 fleet capacity. So, so far, the, uh, the Empire is amazing. And I could definitely say out of the vanilla Empires that I've played, New this is by far one of my it. favorites to play. And it's because of technocracy. Technocracy is something that I've sworn by since I saw this in the game. So technocracy, having the ability to have some of your capital buildings use science directors and also creating unity, you can snowball your unity and your science production so quickly. It's so nice to be able to do that. You know, right now I'm just kind of ignoring our planets because I don't want to have to take the time to spend 79,000 uh, minerals to go through and micromanage all of that stuff. But overall, this empire has been really, really amazing. You know, it's been really fun to play as. Uh, it's been, honestly, really interesting to see how I pick it up, because I've only ever played as the United Nations of Earth, as well as, I think, one of the machine intelligences? I think one of the rogue servitors, I tried it. But then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to make my own. And so I did. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, honestly, kind of cool to see. It looks like the Galactic Chim Empire is starting to expand over here. They're trying to run away, probably, because they know they've got these assholes next door now on both sides of them. That's going to be really unfortunate for them. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really, really happy with how it's gone on, and I'm really happy that everyone here in the um, the Solaris community on my channel uh, and on Twitter and everything like that, and, you know, thanks to the devs and everything, uh, they've really made this possible by, you know, um, making such an incredibly awesome game 
and it's just been a it's it's been a lot of fun. We're gonna do some more uh, Stellaris Let's Plays, uh, but down there in the comment section, I do need your help. For the next Empire that we do, what would you want to see? Because I'm just curious, I want to pick your brains a little bit. What is the next Empire that you want to see? Do you want to see it full machine playthrough? Do you want to see like a very dangerous kind of fanatic purifiers or determined exterminators? Do you want to see peaceful and try and, you know, federate the entire galaxy? Uh, do you want to see max crisis and max difficulties? Um, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to do something like that just because I hate... I hate advanced starts, so we might tinker with a couple of the settings when it comes to making it the hardest it can be in the galaxy. Um, oh, you know what? I, I haven't even been doing anything on shields. I need to be doing things on shields, too, just in case. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys are thinking down there in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Our fleets are looking amazing. I'd love to hear what you have to say about you know the next playthrough, because I wanted to do, uh, based off one of the comments that I got on a community post, I wanted to do a vanilla playthrough to kind of showcase what it's like to play as one of the vanilla empires and show that you don't necessarily need to make a brand new one every time you play Stellaris, but let's be honest, it's like the best part of Stellaris is being able to make your own empires. Um, but yeah, so I've really enjoyed the feedback, I've really enjoyed the support on this on this series. Um, Stellaris, I think, has a very, I would say, semi-permanent place here on the channel, um, whether it's the tutorial versions or the Let's Plays or, you know, dev diaries and stuff like that when new DLC starts coming out or updates start coming out, you can definitely park it here and uh, get all your updates that you need to get. So, I'm gonna wait out the last six months to see if the in-game crisis spawns, and if it does not, then I will be ending the game on January 1st. Okay, and with that being said, you guys, thank you so, so much for watching this series. Thank you for watching this episode. I know it wasn't the ending that I wanted, nor you wanted. Uh, unfortunately, I want to move on to a different Let's Play of Stellaris Console Edition. So like I said, please do let me know what you guys are thinking down there in the comment section for, uh, you know, the next Let's Play. And I believe the next episode will begin on next Wednesday. So you guys have plenty of time to let me know what's going on and what you want to see. So until then, guys, thank you so, so much for coming on by. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.